What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So a couple of weeks ago I made a video about visiting a local film lab here in Budapest. And today I'm very excited to share some of the photos that I've received. Now I had five roles developed in total, but today I'm going to be focusing on the three roles that I shot during the Camino de Santiago. I shot all three of these roles on this compact Olympics XA1. It's a rangefinder film camera with a 35mm fixed lens. The photos this camera produces are not always the sharpest, but they're more than sufficient to reproduce what I experienced on my pilgrimage. Now for a very brief backstory, the Camino de Santiago is a traditional pilgrimage which stretches through the northern portion of Spain. Traditionally, the Camino starts in a small Pyrenees town in France called saint jean pied de Pour, and it crosses over the Pyrenees and concludes in the town of Santiago de Compostela. Now, I began my pilgrimage in Pamplona, Spain because of the COVID restrictions. I didn't want to deal with a border crossing and I was already in Spain. But after reaching Santiago, I continued on and all told, I took over a million steps and walked over 800 kilometers. I brought just three rolls of film with me and this is what I captured. Now, they say the Camino begins the moment you leave your doorstep and I found that to be true. This first image I captured was in Salamanca, Spain, about an hour from where I was living at the time and where I caught the train to take up to Pamplona where I would begin walking. I took this photo for a couple of reasons. For one, the composition. I really like shadows and you'll see in a lot of my photos that I really like a linear flow. So you might notice the way the train sort of feeds into the corners of the frame and disappears into the distance. I also like the way the stewardess was approaching me with her traditional uniform and of course the mask which is very indicative of the times we are living in. Now I very rarely photograph the same subject more than once for a couple of reasons. For one, I hate making decisions. So if I take two of the same image as I've done here, now if I go to share these photos, I'm not really sure which one to share. Because the stewardess was not in this photo, I allowed myself to frame it a little more properly. The first one was kind of shot at the hip to be a little more inconspicuous. So I do prefer the orientation of this one. I was also a little bit closer to the sign where I hope to capture the time and destination but as you can see, I didn't quite get it in its entirety. Once I boarded the train, the excitement really set in. All I had was a backpack with me and I couldn't wait to begin this pilgrimage. There was a storm brewing in the distance and as the train coasted across the wheat fields of Castellón, it was really picturesque. Now I know better than to try to take film photos when in motion, but I did it anyway and no regrets. After this five hour train journey, I arrived in Pamplona just before evening commenced. It was a gray day and one of the first things that caught my attention was the difference in architecture. I didn't really feel like I was in Spain anymore, if anything I felt like I was in France. As I was strolling around the city, I got caught in a torrential downpour and I was lucky to seek shelter under another one of these LED lit awnings. I ended up camping out under this awning for 20 or 30 minutes and it was really refreshing to observe people running through the streets, many of them happy. Later that evening, just before the sunset, I snapped this image of some very empty streets on what was a Sunday evening. This graffiti down on the right hand side, Hasalaske, I'm, I'm not sure what it says, but the reason that it was interesting to me is because this is not Spanish, but Basque. Another reminder that this area of Spain really is culturally different. The next morning, I began making my way towards Santiago de Compostela, a journey that would encompass over 750 kilometers. I set out early before the sun had risen, and there was only one other pilgrim making his way through the Pamplona streets at the time. Jose and I quickly sparked up a conversation, and he shared stories from what seemed to be a really interesting life. He was from the northern Spanish Comunidad of Asturias, one I had visited the year prior. We talked about Asturias, about his childhood during the reign of Franco, and about how he'd spent time working in Switzerland. 
He was a really friendly, really interesting guy. And for the first 10 kilometers or so of my Camino, he made a great companion. As the city began to recede behind me and the sun began to rise, I was struck by the first of many beautiful landscapes along the way. I'm really happy with the composition of the image. I love the way film reproduces blue skies and I love the golden hue of the wheat. Again, this is a perfect example of how this type of camera um, and a lot of film cameras, they're not going to produce super sharp HDR images, but in a way, I feel like this almost retells the scene more honestly. This is what I saw. When you're looking at a field of wheat, you're not seeing every little detail of every single blade. You're looking at the scene as a whole, and that's what a film camera can capture. Here we are a little bit further down the trail. I love these subtle hills with the windmills in the distance, and of course, the golden wheat in the foreground and the blue sky in the background. You'll also notice my shadow here. When you're shooting in that early morning light, it's difficult to avoid shadows. I noticed this shadow and I decided to include it in the frame intentionally because it would have been difficult to avoid and because it tells part of the story. You can see a little bit of the hood of my jacket. It was a cold morning and of course this heavy pack that I lugged across Spain. As I made my way down the trail, it was quiet until this woman merged onto the trail for her morning stroll, and I waited until she entered a patch of light to snap this image. Here we have another beautiful landscape of the Navarra countryside. A little bit further down the trail, the sun had risen a little bit higher, it was starting to warm up, and that woman who I had been following shed her jacket, and I couldn't help but snap her image again. Now film images are far from perfect and here we have a perfect example of some imperfections. That's actually a national park and you can see these very tall mountains rising above the clouds. I attempted this image again just a little bit further down the trail. This time I wanted to focus in a little bit more on the wheat but as you can see the colors are way off. It's way too blue and again I'm not really sure why that happened. Here we have our first glance of the traditional Camino Insignia. So all along the way, there are these yellow arrows that point towards Santiago. I've seen them on the side of barns. I've seen them painted along asphalt on the highway. But here, they're on a traditional stone marker with the Camino Clamshell Insignia. Now, I don't love the composition of this image, but I do love what it represents. So there wasn't a whole lot of shade on this initial stretch of the Camino and, and I took advantage of this tree where I stopped and applied some sunscreen because I didn't think it'd be wise to get a sunburn on my first day of walking. Looking back amongst the haze at the base of the mountains, I could just make out a few buildings from what was Pamplona. And it was really inspiring to see how far I'd come in just a few hours on foot. This would be a recurring theme throughout the Camino. With this photo, I nearly completed this initial climb. We can see that I'm about at eye level with these windmills, which I'd been working toward all morning. Once I crossed over that mountain, I had to quickly descend. And on the other side, about 10 kilometers away, I passed through my first of many Camino villages. Just before I entered the town, I went through this field of poppies, which was pretty magnificent. Approaching midday, I came across this sun-soaked town which was totally empty, very representative of a Spanish town in summer. I snapped this photo at the conclusion of my first day of walking. This was one of the most picturesque towns I encountered during my entire month of walking. Now, once again, I'm a little bit disappointed in this image. I'm not too happy with the way the colors were reproduced here. It's a little bit too saturated, the blue is too dark, and it doesn't quite represent what I saw at the moment. But still, I love the lines, I love the flow of the vineyards, I love the way the town rests right in the center, right on this cloudy horizon, and uh, it was a truly picturesque scene. I entered the town at like 3.30 or 4 in the afternoon, which of course is siesta hour, a very real tradition in Spain, especially during the summer. And I felt like these sleepy cats resting on the cobblestone right in the middle of the main street of the town were perfectly representative. Here's a photo I took at dusk 
from the balcony of the first albergue where I stayed. Albergues are like hostels, but they're only for pilgrims or people walking the Camino de Santiago. The next morning, I set out to rain showers, and to my surprise, I bumped into Jose within the first couple hundred meters. Jose and I had a chat, and again, I carried on because I still had fresher legs than he did. Not far down the trail, I befriended David from Bologna. An incredibly friendly guy with a really positive, really contagious energy. We walked together for the rest of that morning into early afternoon, and eventually the skies did clear up a bit. In the distance of this photo, you can see almost a volcanic type peak, a very sharp mountain. At the end of this day, I would be on the other side of it. I snapped this photo as David and I were approaching the town where we would part ways. This was an accidental image. This photo is from the same day. What started out as a rainy, cold morning cleared into a very hot, dry afternoon. And while I'm not super happy with the composition of this image, it's quite hazy, I was struck by how quickly the landscape had changed once again. I mentioned that volcanic looking peak in the distance before, and here we can see I am now getting much closer to it. I allowed this pilgrim to pass me so that he would be a part of this image, and when we finally reached the albergue later that afternoon, we were bunkmates, and we had a really good chat. He was from the Valencia region, and, and he'd walked the Camino over 20 times. In this image, you can see that I'm a little bit further down this mountain ridge that I snapped two images back. This one's a little bit sharper, a little bit clearer, and I'm happy with it. Morning three started out rainy again. I set out super early that morning. I couldn't sleep in the albergue that night, and I think I started walking around 5.30. The first 12 kilometers of that stretch were totally rural. There were no towns, no villages, no houses whatsoever. I was entirely on my own during this stretch with my thoughts and of course this incredibly breathtaking landscape. This is one of my favorite photos of the Camino. I love the golden wheat in the foreground. I love the symmetrically centered mountain in the distance, of course, shrouded in clouds, and this rolling rusted green farmland in the midground. Little details like the windmills on the left make this the type of image that I could stare at for a really long time, the one that I'm attempting to take every time I click the shutter on my camera. When I finally did come upon a town on day three, it was not at all what I expected. This town with its pastel facades and gray skies reminded me of something much more Northern European, maybe German or Czech. I really like the depth of this image. That day, day three, I was ridiculously ambitious. I walked something like 47 kilometers just from town to town, and then later that evening I walked around the city of Logroño with a friend from Romania that I'd made along the way. I was so tired that evening that I didn't take my camera with me, and I don't have a single photo from the city of Logroño. I mean, I'd walked over a marathon, so don't blame me, but I also think the lack of photos from the cities along the way are very representative of my priorities when I was walking. I took this photo on the morning of my fourth day of walking. This was on the outskirts of the city of Legroño. Day four was a beautiful day. There were clear skies, and the thing that inspired me to take this was the colors. Now, I didn't want to interrupt this couple. The trail was directly behind them, and I walked right up to them before taking this right, which is signified by the arrow painted on the stone. I hadn't made it far on day four. This is still at this lake, just on the outskirts of town, that I stopped for my first beer of the day. My legs were really feeling it after walking what was more than a marathon the day before. But it wasn't just in need of a beer that I stopped and took this image. It was because this scene, this lawn with its red umbrellas, was ridiculously picturesque. After a nice refreshing Estrella Galicia, I continued on along my way, and it wasn't long before I crossed paths with Chris, the guy pictured on the right, and his father, 75-year-old Roy. 
Over the course of the next few hours, Chris, Roy, and I walked along together, and they shared a lot of really interesting stories. And this pilgrimage was representative of self-discovery for both of them. It was so refreshing to hear that people later in life were still open to rediscovering themselves, to learning more about the world, and to reshaping their perspectives. Now we've been walking together for a couple of hours. It was a hot day, it was really dry. We were approaching a very arid section of the Camino when we came across this guy camped out on the side of the trail in a small patch of shade. He said something to us, when Camino or something along those lines, but he said it in a strange accent. This sparked up a conversation, and as he was also British, my British companions and him began a conversation. His name was Russell, and he'd spent the past three years living on the Camino. At the conclusion of this conversation, Chris asked if he could strum a tune on the guitar, and to my surprise, he ripped out this incredibly complex Led Zeppelin song. After we bid farewell to Russell, someone who'd continually resurface, we continued our way through vineyard after vineyard, most of which looked something like this. Now, this was the last photo I took on my first of three rolls of film that I took with me on my month-long pilgrimage of the Camino de Santiago. This was only the fourth day of my month-long trip, and at this point I was wondering what I would do about my film situation. I had to decide if I'd try to find more film when I came across the next city or big town, or should I stick with what I had and try to become a little bit more focused, a little bit more intentional with each image I chose to capture. On day four, I was starting to get a feeling of what the Camino meant, but there was so much more to discover ahead. I'll be back soon to share with you the rest.